Hello and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm your host Frank Foster and today we start a new and very interesting series. We're going to take a look at all of the major combat divisions that fought in World War II in the European theater. Because one of the questions that I receive most frequently is what were the military honors that my dad or my granddad earned fighting in World War II in the European theater? And as well you may know already, that they only came home in World War II with ribbon bars to represent their military awards. And, well, heck, some of the medals were not even designed or struck or available till two or three years after the war. So many veterans never received their medals. We'll take a look at each major division, patch, and the heraldry and the significance behind it, the distinctive unit insignia. We'll take a look at the campaigns they participated in by date, and we'll provide you with a reference below on that. We'll take a look at the major unit awards that they earned and the dates they earned them. So you can have that as a reference below. And then we'll take a look at the medals that every soldier who served in World War II in the European theater would have earned. And we'll look at the difference in the medals that a combat infantryman or combat medic would have earned as opposed to an artilleryman or a supply sergeant. I think you'll find it very interesting, and it should answer almost all of your questions. And we'll try to provide all the references that you need to check on down below. Okay, come on, let's go. The 1st Infantry Division, known as the Big Red One, was activated in June 1940 at Fort Benning, Georgia. And it entered into combat in November 1942 in Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of North Africa. It was one of the first American units to land on North African soil, and then the division went on to fight in several campaigns in Europe, including the invasion of Sicily and the D-Day landings in Normandy. The 1st Infantry Division was responsible for securing the eastern flank of the Allied forces during the Normandy invasion. The division fought its way through the hedge groves of France and into Germany, taking part in some of the most intense battles of the war. The division was instrumental in the liberation of Aachen, the first major German city to fall to the Allies. And the division also played a significant role in the Battle of the Bulge and was among the first units to cross the Rhine River into Germany. The famous shoulder sleeve insignia of the 1st Infantry Division, a big red one, is an olive drab shield almost four inches tall with a red Arabic numeral one to identify the division's designation. The 1st Division's distinctive unit insignia, shown in the lower left, has the colors red and blue that are from the distinguishing flags of infantry divisions. The figure in the center is that of the 1st Infantry Division monument located in Washington, D.C. Within the 1st Infantry Division, there were three major infantry regiments, and those were the 16th Infantry Regiment, that's starting on your left, and in the center, the 18th Infantry Regiment, and then the 26th Infantry Regiment, shown on your right. Let's also take a quick look at some of the unit crests of the 1st Division's field artillery units. Well, of course, uh, they refer to themselves as the King of Battle. Starting on your left was the 5th Artillery, Faithful and True, the 7th Field Artillery, Battalion of the 32nd Field Artillery, Proud Americans, the 6th Battalion of the 15th Field Artillery, and the 2nd Battalion of the 33rd Field Artillery Regiment. Napoleon once famously said that an army travels on its stomach, and the truth of it is a modern army travels on its support system to carry it forward. And so let's take a look at some of the 1st Division support units. Starting on your left was the 1st Engineer Battalion, the 1st Medical Battalion, and the center is the 1st Supply and Transportation Battalion, the 701st Maintenance Company, and the 1st Military Police Unit. <laughs> Special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for providing all the medals and badges that you see in the show today. And if you enjoy these shows, please give us a like and subscribe. That will keep us on the air. So, and give us your feedback in the comments below. Okay, let's keep going. Division headquarters, headquarters detachment, special troops, and all non-color bearing elements of a 1st Infantry Division wore the division's distinctive unit insignia, which I showed to you earlier. 
The 1st Infantry Division is remarkable in that it fought in eight campaigns during the European African Middle Eastern Theater. It fought in Algiers, French Morocco, Tunisia, Sicily, Normandy, Northern France, Rhineland, Ardennes, Alsace, and Central Europe. And so it would have had one silver bottle star, battle star for five bronze stars, and three additional bronze stars, as well as an arrowhead for assault landings, as shown on the upper left. As you can see, the arrowhead, the silver star, and the three bronze stars. Now, not every soldier would have that, but depending on which campaigns he was in, he would have a bronze star for each campaign or a silver star for every five. In addition to individual decorations and service medals, which we'll look at in just a moment, the 1st Infantry Division earned every prestigious unit award during World War II. The Presidential Unit Citation, the Valorous Unit Citation, the Meritorious Unit Commendation, and even the Belgium Forgere and the French Croix de Guerre with Palms. And I'll cover those. So I want to show you those and the equivalent individual awards so you'll understand why these unit awards are so prestigious. And I'll even show you the Belgium and the French Croix de Guerre awards. So looking left to right on the upper left is the Presidential Unit Citation. In the center is the Valorous Unit Citation. And on the right is the Meritorious Unit Commendation. And below that are listed the different dates or locations where these were earned. But I'll give you those in detail down below in writing. The Presidential Unit Citation, originally called the Distinguished Unit Citation, is the unit equivalent of an individual earning the Distinguished Service Cross. The Army Valorous Unit Award is the equivalent of the individual award of the Silver Star Medal, while the Meritorious Unit Commendation Award is the equivalent of the Legion of Merit as an individual award. There are examples of the French Forgere and the Belgian Forgere, the French in the colors of the French Cross of War shown on the left, and the Belgium in the colors of the Belgium Cross of War shown in the center. And the way they would be worn on the left side of the uniform through the epaulette and hanging over his shoulder as shown here. Just as a quick review, during World War II, the War Department designated three major campaign areas as shown here. On the left was the Pacific Campaign Area, which you see the yellow ribbon. In the center was the American Theater with the blue ribbon. And on the right, the one that we're looking at for the 1st Infantry Division, is the European African Middle East Theater. So this is what we're going to take a look at. This World War II medic came home at the end of the war with four ribbons, as shown on the left. What we know today is he should have six medals, as shown on the right. And now I'll give you a detailed walk through what I'm talking about. So every soldier who served in the 1st Infantry Division in the European Theater would have been authorized these three medals. The American Campaign Medal the European African Middle East Campaign Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. And as I mentioned earlier, none of these medals had been designed or even struck until a couple of years after World War II. So you might say, well, my granddad was a number three cannoneer in the 6th Battalion of the 15th Artillery, so he came home probably with the American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal, as shown here with whatever campaign stars he earned. And his marksmanship badges is shown down at the bottom. No, not necessarily so. Let's take the next look. 1943, the Army changed the criteria for the award of a Good Conduct Medal, and it could be awarded after one year's service. And so, your granddad, unless he got caught sneaking off to Paris one evening when he shouldn't have, would be authorized a Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal, as shown here. But wait, there's another medal because, well, the 1st Infantry Division did not go home after World War II. When the war ended in May, the 1st Infantry Division, being the division with the most combat time, of course, 
was designated to stay as an occupying force in Germany till 1950. And so most every member of a division would be authorized the occupation medal for Germany with the Germany bar. So now our World War II veteran of the 1st Infantry Division would have a display case like this with five medals in it. The Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign, the ETO Medal, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation Medal, along with, most probably, a presidential unit citation that was earned during the time he was there. And in 1947, General Marshall decided that every infantry soldier and medic who earned the Combat Infantryman's Badge or the Combat Medic's Badge would be authorized the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service. Now, that differs from the Bronze Star Medal for Valor, which would have a V fixed on it. But every combat infantryman and medic of the 1st Infantry Division is then authorized in 1947 to have the Bronze Star for Meritorious Service. So now the appropriate awards for the 1st Infantry Combat Medic or Combat Infantryman would look like this. The Bronze Star Medal, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal with the appropriate campaign stars or arrowhead for invasion, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation Medal, and then down below any unit awards that he might have qualified for. So our combat medic who came home with four ribbons is actually today authorized six medals as shown here. During the European conflict, over 18,000 First Infantry Division soldiers were killed or wounded, so it would not be unusual to see the Purple Heart Medal in the display. There were a couple of medals I did mention, and shown on your far left is the American Defense Medal, and that would have been authorized any member of the 1st Infantry Division who joined the division when it was activated in 1940 at Fort Benning before Pearl Harbor. If you want to know more about the American Defense Medal, there's a separate video available. The other medal I didn't mention was the Women's Army Corps Service Medal, and there's a separate video available on it also. And if you're tracking down your dad or granddad's World War II medals, you may find our World War II Army DD-214 video very helpful. (laughs) Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, please give us comments or even better, a like or subscribe. That'll keep us on the air. And don't forget, all of the campaign credits and all of the unit award credits are listed below. So, see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop.